Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Hey Daniel here. All right, today we're going to be taking a little look at Rad Zone, a roll and write, print and play solo game from Toby Lancaster. The PDF is fully available on DriveThruRPG for I think $10. I just bought it. I was sent this um, hard copy that was on Kickstarter for a review, but I liked the game enough that I went and purchased the PDF just to throw some uh, just to throw some cash at Toby Lancaster because I think he has created a pretty cool game. And just today or yesterday, he did announce a Christmas themed expansion that is going to be in PDF, and he's going to be sending that out to the Kickstarter backers, and it is going to be available on DriveThruRPG soon for um, people who didn't back it. So in this game, it is, I think, somewhat similar to something like Four Against Darkness or uh, D100 Dungeon, but it is set in a post-apocalyptic world. And I know some people recently have asked me if they knew, if I knew of a game that was similar to those, but set in a post-apocalyptic setting. And that is this game. So if you like those games and you were looking for something in a different setting, I would say definitely check it out. Um, but don't think that this is just kind of a reskinned Four Against Darkness or a reskinned D100 dungeon. It is doing quite a bit uh, differently that I think it can easily sit alongside a collection of those games and offer up something unique every time you play it. So what you are doing is each eye, uh, you're going to be playing in kind of short campaigns and you are going to be managing a, a bunker of survivors and you're going to start with 10 different characters. Now there are a number of characters that are pre-made. There are character packs that you can buy, little expansions that you can buy. And you're going to pretty much kind of like randomly determine 10 characters that are going to be starting in your bunker. And um, I think the game comes with, uh, I, I think it's over 12. The characters are very simple. You can also, there are also rules to create characters. Now I just printed these out on paper here. And the characters, like I said, are very simple. You're gonna have a name, um, a number of fable dice, which fable dice are dice that you can uh, roll for fate to like uh, to to cheat fate if you want to re-roll dice. Those are um, attempts that you can use to re-roll dice. A little story, and then basically just a trait. There are no stats. There are really no stat checks in this game. All of the rules are kind of they're story focused rules. So you might come across an encounter that says, well, if you're a quick shot, you can do this. Or if you have a gun, maybe you can do this. If you have a helmet, then you can do this. So the different things you get, the different items, the different gear, um, nothing is going to add to stats or anything like that. It's all going to be uh, narrative based. And so what you're going to do is each game you're going to have you're going to play in seasons and you're going to play in episodes so in each episode you are going to pick one character from your roster and they are going to be sent out on a journey to the city from the bunker to the city then once they're in the city you are going to explore a certain location looking for items looking for materials things like food, water, medical supplies, fuel, depending on the mission that you're on. Then you're going to um, you're going to explore that location and all the locations are unique and they all come with these really cool isometric maps that you can print out. You will be printing out a lot of paper with this, you'll be using a lot of paper and printouts on this game because you are going to be coloring the pages as you go. And so I know that some people will slip their pages into sleeves so then they can just color on the sleeve and not waste paper. But again, you're going to be searching through different locations and you're going to kind of like trying to push your luck, staying in these locations, trying to survive, going from location to location, looking for the gear that you need trying to avoid radiation because if you take too much radiation that character will die trying to avoid afflictions like i got in a in a gunfight so i got grazed by a bullet and eventually 
just finding the materials you need and then going on a journey from the city back to your bunker to where if you make it back alive, you will have a successful mission. And the way you win the game is you either survive 10 episodes. And I think even if just one of your survivors survives up to 10 episodes, you win the game or you are out in the world and you find 10 survivors that you will send back to your bunker thus we are 20 thus um, increasing your survivor total to 20 there and so it's pretty it, it, it's really interesting there are some really cool things that i think this game does and one of them is the journey to and journey from the location so i'm going to kind of show you here how that works it's really cool I've never seen this in a game before. It might be out there, but I, um, I'm totally envious of who, <laughs> if Toby is the guy who came up with this system, I think it's really cool and I'm super envious of that. I wish I would have come up with it for, for something. Um, so I was sending this uh, Xander Tail. He was the character that I was sending out. He says, Xander was a chef. Uh, skills he has taken into the current crisis. He's excellent at making food stretch further and understands what can and cannot be eaten. He often wears a rubber apron. My traits that I started with were a patient watcher and good intuition. And I only have one fable die for uh, Xander there. And those traits are listed here in the book. So the book is about 90 pages, but half of that is charts that you're going to be rolling dice on while you are searching, while you are having random encounters. The rules themselves are only about 40 pages and they're relatively simple. Uh, maybe think maybe like four against darkness plus, maybe something like that. But uh, the traits are listed here and the traits come in different groupings. You have endurance traits, intelligence traits, mindfulness, immunity, movement, and experience. So Xander's traits, well, one was patient watcher. And so I can reroll up to three radiation scan dice per location. So once you get into locations, Every time it is, you take a new turn, you're going to be rolling dice to determine the heat map of the radiation in that location, trying to avoid uh, pockets of extreme radiation. So being a patient watcher, you're able to mitigate that luck a little bit. And I also have good intuition where I can roll again on one search area per location. So again, while you go to these locations, there are going to be these squares here. And those are the places that you want to get to in order to search for materials and things to help your character and your bunker survive. And as you move deeper into each location, the chances of finding better things increases. But that also means you're probably going to have to go through more radiation and maybe having to deal with more bad things along the way. So again, there is a push your luck element to that. And each mission, you have 24 hours to journey to the city, search through however many locations you want to search to find your um, to find what you're looking for and journey back. So those were the um, the traits there. And then there's also a chance that you can have companions like a dog, a hawk, or a fox. And the missions here, right now there are only uh, kind of like six different missions. And then there are uh, the, the tables are broken out in between each, in each of those. So the missions aren't all that different. You are always going to a location to find certain things and take it back. It is kind of a survival game in that element. But Toby did say that there are going to be uh, new mission types added to future expansions. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of stuff he comes up with. But uh, the first part of the game, yeah, is going to be the journey to the city. And you're going to have a pages of these, of these journey uh, cards. And you're going to print those out and you're going to pick two at random. One is going to be your journey to the city and then one is going to be your journey from the city. And on those, there are going to be different um, kinds of encounters that you could have. And what you do is you start moving one square at a time from left to right. So uh, starting at this uh, triangle there, that's your bunker. And then you are trying to get to the city. And when you reach this end zone here, uh, that is the city. And you can move from left to right or you can move up, up and down. 
but you can only stay in each column for three points of movement. And as you approach these different icons, the closer you are to them, when you go into their column, the greater the chance of you having that encounter. So there's this one here is a perilous. So I wanted to have this random encounter. So I moved down three and then I moved across. And if you are on the space or next to it, you automatically have that encounter. And when you reach a perilous space, then you look at the book here and you find your peril chart and you roll a random die to see what uh, happens to you. So uh, let me find the peril table here. So let's just say that I was uh, moving there and I wanted to go there. I would roll two dice actually, because it's a D6, D6. So we'll say the uh, purple die here is first. So four and three. So um, this is what I would have found. Strung up on a lamp post here is a cage and in it is a skinny dog. It raises its head slowly and whines as you approach. You need to climb the post to release the chain to free the dog. The choice is yours. Continue on your journey or roll the die. Okay, so um, I'll roll. I rolled the three. Uh, you manage to reach the top of the pole and release the chain. It rattles free and crashes to the road. The cage door flips open and the dog leaps free and runs off. However, if you roll the five or a six, you could have that dog as a companion. So that would be one little encounter that you could have. Another type of encounter you can have as you're going to the city is these radiation spots. And so here I moved it down because I wanted to get towards this car so I could search this car. So I landed on this spot and then you count how many squares to that icon. So it was one, two, three, four, five. So if I roll on a D6, any of those squares, well, then I'm safe from that encounter. But if I roll a six here, then I have a run into radiation and I take the point of radiation. So I moved on here and I found this car. And so I decided to search the car. And so when you search the car, you turn back to the back of the book and you turn to the, this is like the search matrix as it's called, and you find your car. So a wrecked car here, uh, is turned to page 88. And so then you figure out on 88, you see uh, what kind of car you're going to be searching. And there are these uh, charts here. And so first thing you do is you figure out what chart you're rolling on. So a six, so I'm rolling on wrecked car chart seven. So I would turn there and then I would roll to see what I found, a uh, two. This is the lucky find, do not apply, uh, do not apply modifier rolls, a uh, two. You pull back the, uh, the, the seat and find a stack of forgotten suitcases. You search them quickly, gain one food and one water. Okay, so that would have been a pretty great find because on this mission, I am looking for one food, one water, one medical supply, one fuel and one raw material. If I fail to return to my bunker with those uh, items, then three survivors flee, thus uh, making it harder for me to win the game. Okay, so then I decided to go up here. Uh, I wanted to get up to this car to search and I wanted to get far as, away from uh, this bandit here, this encounter here, and then this radiation spot. So I landed here and this was one, two, three, four, five, uh, four spaces away from uh, this encounter with an enemy. And so if I roll a one, two, three, or four, I would have been safe. If I rolled a five or a six, I would have encountered the enemy. And there really isn't combat in this game. You're not rolling dice for combat. Every time you encounter an enemy, you have to choose a way to avoid combat because your guys really aren't warriors. So if you have a dog, a hawk, then you might be able to use them to help create a distraction. So you would roll a die. You might have something in your pack that can help you do something. Uh, there are different um, items that you can pick up. And again, the items are just going to give you kind of like a narrative bonuses and not stat bonuses. You can choose to run into a nearest building. You can sacrifice a piece of loot to escape the combat. If you have a weapon, then you can roll the die on the weapon chart and um, you might be able to intimidate the enemy to get them to, uh, to back off. You might get into a little gunfight with them, but you aren't going to be rolling dice like and comparing numbers or anything like that. Yep, so then I went over here and I searched that car. Um, these little medical spaces, these are spaces where if you encounter them, then you can heal a point of radiation. 
and I finally made it from the journey to and I made it into the city so then I decided to uh, go to the factory and kind of like see maybe what is in the factory here and so once you make it to a city well then you're going to be looking at these isometric maps here and you are going to be starting at the arrow and you're going to be moving in and you're going to need some color pencils you're going to need a yellow a green and a red and before you make a move you need to roll first of all you need to have uh, three dice and you kind of need to choose the color and the order so i'm going to say uh, yellow pink and blue here for that okay so that's going to be the order and the factory each of the locations will give you a little narrative about um, what kind of location it is It'll tell you to watch out for certain things there are a thing called extra vigilant doubles and you can pick four different numbers from a d6 and add those to this little chart here and anytime you roll doubles you automatic uh, of one of those numbers you automatically find one of the things you are looking for and then you want to cross that off so this is just a little reminder to yeah watch out for those um, mark off an hour for every time you search so every time you go to one of these uh, spots of interest here you are going to be searching so you're going to use uh, time to search like that luckily here I was equipped with some night vision goggles so that allows me to every time I leave a location I can add or gain an hour so if I was uh, leaving a location at hour 21 then I wouldn't have I could mark off uh, that and, and and have an extra hour basically it's a little weird some of the some of the some of the rules since they're not stat based it's kind of easy to maybe overthink them but once you realize that everything is just kind of narrative based and you just do what it says then you're fine but the first thing you want to do when you come to a location is you want to scan and usually you can scan the three squares directly in front of where you are but when you're entering a door the only space you have available to scan is right beyond the door so you would take one die and on a one to a two that space is going to be green and that's a safe space on a two to a three it's going to be yellow and that is a kind of a half dangerous half safe space entering one yellow space is safe but if you ever go f uh, into uh, one or, or two or more yellow spaces then you take a point of radiation damage and if you uh, roll a five or a six and that space is red it's irradiated it's a dangerous space and those spaces will definitely cause you to take a radiation damage and there aren't really hit points in this game you are just kind of keeping track of radiation damage and those afflictions that will um, affect your character in bad ways so uh, the space right inside the door is a one okay so that is a green space so you would color that green so we know that that space is safe to move into so now I can choose to move into this I'm going to move in there okay so I want to try to get to this OF7 to uh, search this space here so um, I'm going to scan these three squares right in front of me you can also scan you, know, you can also move diagonally but if you scan diagonally you can only scan two squares they don't the third square doesn't like reach over so you're always kind of better off uh, scanning as much as you can so I'm going to uh, scan these three squares in front of me to see uh, how that is so we're going to go like this we're going to take these and we're going to go four six and three okay so that wasn't that wasn't very good so uh this square diagonal here because we're going to read it like this from the way we're facing yellow pink blue so that is a, a yellow okay then right in front of us is a red so we want to try to avoid that space and then another yellow so now we don't have to move into one of those spaces we could uh, go in this direction and scan another space but I'm just going to go ahead and move into this yellow space so the yellow spaces are safe to move into as long as it's only one so now I want to get to that OF7 uh, space which is uh, right here and that is a search space so I am going to uh, roll I'm going to scan so I'm, I moved from this green to this yellow so now I'm going to scan these three squares right in front of me okay so that's bad 
So um, this is really bad, actually. So that's a three. That is a, another yellow on this one. And then two reds. So this room is pretty dangerous here. Okay, so I do want to search this square. And this search square is a red search square. So I am going to move into that. So I would, at that point, I would mark off a um, radiation damage. And so if you ever get to 10, I believe your character dies. I can't exactly remember, but it's bad. You can get mutated and then you can die. So then I would say, okay, OF7. So I would turn to my uh, book here and I would find OF7. Uh, That's an office. And then I would roll a D6 to see what I find in that space. What did I risk my life to find for? Uh, you spot a red fire axe lying under a desk. Add this as a weapon. Okay, we find a weapon, an axe. It is caught up in a web of cables and uh, must have been missed. Also gain one raw material. Okay, so for searching in that irradiated space, I found an axe and some raw materials. Uh, if I needed raw materials, which I don't, I've already found them, I could mark it off. And then I could also add an axe as a weapon to my equipment. And so you're going to be basically doing that moving through the building, scanning, trying to find good uh, path through the building. If you ever roll three ones or twos, that's like a super good roll, which means you have filled in three green. Well, then you get, um, you get a little bonus. And if you ever do that, then you can roll and you can, if you roll a one or two, you can fill in one more green that is adjacent. If you roll a three or four, you can do three more tiles or if you roll a five or six, you can heal a point of, mu uh, of radiation. If you ever roll three fives or sixes, well then that's a super unlucky roll and then really bad things happen and you have to roll on this uh, high threat chart there. And there are a ton of different charts to roll on. So if you like rolling on random charts, uh, this is your game because the whole back of the book is just full of random encounters and charts and things for you to find. I do wish that there were a little, that the charts had a little more narrative things to find rather than, I guess th there are some, there are some. I'm not gonna say there aren't a lot, but a lot of times it does, it does seem that you are just finding materials. Um, so it would be cool if, if, if there was just a little more variation, but actually I, I think there is i think there is uh, maybe i just haven't seen it yet but and i haven't really flipped through the book but flipping through and just looking kind of quickly it does look like there are i and i do remember meeting a couple survivors and you know if you had like a, if you had extra food you could give him a food or her a food and, and they might um go back to your bunker and um if you find more than what you are looking for you don't get a bonus. So if I had two food on me, I only need to bring back one food to successfully complete the, the, the mission for that part of the mission. So if I found extra food, well then I could use that during the mission to um, entice people, to bribe people, to maybe um, help to avoid combat and that kind of thing. So I did print out um, some of the rules here as a quick reference I quick I printed out the PDF here we have the icons for the journey I did print out the peril table um, do you have a bunch of different characters so there are some character expansions so you have a whole bunch of different characters that you can print out and then cut out here are all the here's some more uh, journey cards that you can cut out so you can have random journeys uh, there are a lot of different uh, sheets that you can print out. There are also blank character cards such as those so you can create your own characters if you want to. Uh, additionally, there are the game comes with one location pack and that location pack includes a church, a factory, a gym, a large house, an office, a police station, a retail center, a school level one and two and a townhouse. And then there's also additionally a um, location pack that you can purchase that comes with more locations such as apartment, a chapel, a desk, uh, what is that? Desk space, is that what that said? 
yeah, desk share, a desk share uh, office, a house, an industrial building, a mall, level one and two, um, a nursery, a security firm, and the rink. And like I said, there are going to be more expansions coming. Uh, Toby has created quite a few pretty cool looking games and I wanna check out some of his other stuff because I really like this game. I love the journey phase. It's kind of like a puzzle. I love figuring out how to move to optimize my movement to the city or back to the bunker, you know, getting close. These um, icons here, these handshake icons, those are you having a, a chance to find a survivor to send back to your bunker. And uh, just plotting your way through these is really cool. Scanning the different locations is fun. It's different. You're not like in, in D100 Dungeon or, or Four Against Darkness. You aren't rolling to figure out a, a, a room. You are rolling to figure out how the radiation has affected that location and then how you are going to be moving through it. So it's a little puzzly, but it also has some luck, but there also are ways to mitigate your luck. And it can be quite difficult, but I don't find it too challenging. It's not, it's not like, like insanely difficult. I think the, I think the level of challenge is is uh, is is um, manageable. I would say, and the game is a lot of fun. It's it's unique, and so if you're looking for a cool, unique, solo kind of roll and write uh, dungeon crawly thing in a post-apocalyptic setting, I do recommend Rad Zone. And like I said, the PDF on Drive-Thru RPG is only like 10 bucks. So um, you get a lot of game with $10. And just remember, you do need some colored pencils. You need at least 3D6 of different color and different colors. And you will also need some paper. And you are going to have to print out multiple sheets because, you know, as soon as you go through the factory once, that radiation map is no longer useful the next time you go. Things change over time. So if you want to go through the factory again, you're going to need to print out another factory. But I don't know. Paper is pretty cheap these days. So, all right, guys. Yeah, well, that was a look at uh, Toby Lancaster's Rad Zone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.